Welcome to the EC2 Fundamentals series. In this series, we're going to cover the bread and butter of getting into AWS. And that's understanding the main character in any modern infrastructure, the server. Well, in AWS, EC2, which stands for Elastic Cloud Compute, is the service we use to make servers in AWS. So what are we covering in this series? Let's go ahead and talk about that. There's three things. First, we'll cover the history and general concepts of AWS EC2. Now, this is a fabulous starting point for anyone looking to get into modern cloud infrastructures. Far <laughs> too many people want to skip understanding the underlying foundations and yeah, just get to clicking and setting things up and hoping that what they've done is right. <laughs> but this type of workflow, eh, clicking blindly or coding blindly, and by blind, I mean not understanding why or how what you're doing works, that's a recipe for a series of disasters. Security breaches, unnecessary costs, poor implementations, and you know probably the worst of all, <laughs> the inability to solve problems. The thing is, when you understand the fundamentals, it gives you the freedom to critically think. It gives you the ability to look at your skill set and use it creatively. Without that understanding, well, you're prisoner to whatever tutorials or step-by-steps you can find. But with it, you can navigate any problem, create any setup, and know where you are even when there's no help available. So the second thing, we'll do a technical project where we'll explore the details of EC2. To really understand the inner workings, we'll set up multiple EC2 instances. To keep things practical, we'll also set up a Node.js based application on EC2 and make it available for public use over the web. At the end, we'll even build a script out that will let you automate launching an EC2 instance with any Node.js based code base on GitHub. So this is going to give you not only a far deeper understanding, but afterwards you'll have a physical URL, an actual project that you can show people and say, hey, check out my EC2 instance. I know what I'm doing. This project is going to be a good deal of the series since, beyond concepts, the majority of it is just getting comfortable with the workflows. And finally, third, we'll talk about the value and benefits of using AWS EC2, both to yourself and your business. Now, if you're a developer, <laughs> you're probably rolling your eyes, but, but, but just hold on, let me ask you a question. <laughs> you wanna pick what technologies you get to work with, right? You want your company to adopt sound technologies that will make it better, right? Well, in order to do so, you can't just go in and start talking about how neat EC2 is. You need to explain to your company or organization why this will help them grow. Why does it help them with their business needs? And so we'll spend some time equipping you with the right facts and ideas that will make your company more willing to adopt AWS EC2 and what you learn here. Okay, so that's what we're covering in this series, but who is this series for? Well, actually two groups of people. First, people completely new to AWS. If you've never done anything in AWS, this is a great first starting point. As I said, servers are the bread and butter of any infrastructure. And since EC2 is the service that deals with it, that's the perfect first step. The thing is, I don't care what you build, I don't care how you build it, and I don't care what you're building your infrastructure for. If it's on AWS, you are going to run into and use EC2. But practical use aside, even though <laughs> that should be enough, the second reason is that the concepts in EC2 will help you in everything cloud infrastructure related. Getting the flow of making servers under your belt, understanding virtualization, and using this know-how to create something practical so in our case, a few servers. Sure, this is most relevant to AWS, obviously, but it'll help you with any type of cloud computing you look to do in the future, regardless of the provider. So to make it a bit more clear, it'd be like learning to cook with your home kitchen. When you go to cook in a different kitchen, now nah, the skills aren't gonna translate one to one. The different kitchens, stove and ovens will probably work a bit differently. The utensils are probably different. But would you be lost? No. Things would be a bit cloudy at first, but the difference between one oven and the next, between one set of cooking knives and another, you know, as long as you have the fundamentals of it down, it's not going to take you long to get up and running. 
Well, similarly with AWS, if you learn servers here, it'll help you with servers everywhere else. You see, the nice thing about AWS is they're the original. They're the benchmark that tends to set the standards in this space. And so what you learn here will absolutely help you everywhere else. Okay, and then the second group is people experienced in AWS, but not necessarily EC2. If you're entirely new, that statement probably sounds confusing. <laughs> But the thing is, AWS isn't some unified skill that you can just learn and then be able to do everything in AWS. Nah, it's more of an umbrella of skills. And in many cases, even though EC2 is everywhere in AWS, knowing it isn't required when it comes to working with certain services. But really, the bigger case is that AWS provides a lot of sensible defaults when it comes to EC2. So many that you can get away with knowing very little about EC2 and curiously still be productive. Not creative though, just productive. Meaning that you can get things done where there's clear examples and tutorials, but that first really crazy bug that no one else has dealt with. Well, again, if you don't understand EC2 beyond what you've read in a quick setup guide, you're gonna have a very, very long night debugging. And so if you're experienced in AWS, and even if you've worked a good deal with EC2, you can still get a lot out of this. We don't hold back when going through EC2 in this series. We're going to look at every single configuration option and all of the concepts behind them. We're going to talk about the elastic network interfaces and elastic block storage. We're going to talk about networks and boot scripts. There is a lot. Okay, and so that's who this is for. But now we need to talk about what you need to know. So even though this is for people to new to AWS or experience in AWS, there's still some requirements to get the most out of this. So three things. First, you need an AWS account. We're not going to be walking through the setup of each and every step of making an AWS account. At the end of the day, you know, it's a business. They want your money. <laughs> and so they make signing up uh, really easy, extremely easy. And the big bonus is that if you've never created an AWS account before, you'll get the one year of their free tier. And in their free tier, you get to do all sorts of stuff and use all sorts of services for free. And you'll be able to do everything in this series for free as well. Now, if you're already off of the free tier, don't worry. You know, all we're setting up are instances. And if you know anything about the pricing, you know, it's quite low when it comes to just making them stand alone. Okay, second, basic comfort with Linux and Bash. Because we're dealing with servers and because Linux powers over 95% of the top 1 million domains in the world, talking about Linux is, uh, is pretty much inevitable, but Linux is a gargantuan topic, and if we go down that rabbit hole, uh, we'll probably never come back up. And so basic comfort with Linux and Bash is important. We're not doing anything crazy or fancy here. We'll just move around some files, make some files, use SSH, and we'll write a simple script. And I'll explain everything I'm doing along the way. But, you know, if you don't even know what a shell is <laughs> or how to open one on your computer, you should probably brush up on that first. Now, I also have in parentheses here, or your own shell. So something like Windows PowerShell or the <laughs> very reduced and lacking, in my opinion, Git Bash. You can follow along with those just fine. Again, we're not doing anything crazy, but you do need enough comfort with your shell to translate what I do in Linux to your system. So when I change directories in my shell, that shouldn't phase you. You should know how to do that. When I make a file with my shell, you should know how to do that in yours. But again, we don't do anything nuts. Really, anything I do can easily be looked up using your friendly neighborhood search engine. All right, so those are the first two. We've got one more requirement here, and it's less a requirement, and it's more of an understanding. Understanding that this is not a Linux, OpenSSH, Node.js, or Bash series. This is an EC2 series. Even though this really just goes along with the previous point. You need to be okay with that. Meaning that when we set up the Node.js server, I'm not gonna walk through the nitty gritty of that topic. We'll talk about it to the extent that it helps us understand EC2. That all being said, those things I've listed, just like Linux, we don't do anything crazy with them. So even if you're a beginner in all of those topics, you can still follow along. So those are the three requirements. An AWS account, 
basic comfort with Linux and Bash or your own shell, and just understanding that this isn't a Linux, OpenSSH, Node.js, or Bash series. This is for AWS EC2. Alrighty, so one more thing before we move on. Why learn EC2? Or AWS in general for that matter? Well, I can't speak for everyone obviously, but I can tell you why I learned it. Why I decided it was essential to pick up both EC2 and AWS. And the answer is very simple. Power. You see, up until I became aware of AWS, <laughs> before I'd even considered that it was an option. To me, infrastructure was either a quick host, so something like Heroku, or a massive traditional data center. But I was fortunate enough to join a relatively small company with an engineer who showed me an entirely different world. So I want you to take a guess, just an estimate, for a service that deals with millions of requests and responses monthly, sometimes weekly. How many DevOps and site reliability engineers do you think you need? Probably a lot. <laughs> That's what I would have thought. That's what I would have guessed. And so when I discovered that this entire thing, this entire setup and infrastructure was built and maintained by just one person, one engineer, I was blown away. He told me, yeah, it took some time to figure out and set up, but now I don't have to worry about anything and I can sleep at night. I don't know why I would use anything else. <laughs> Well, after he told me that and seeing everything he'd done, I was sold. I didn't even know something like that was possible, but it was and it is. If you know this stuff, it empowers you as an individual to do what would take teams upon teams upon teams in traditional data center setups. That is power. There's a reason that according to the most recent 2019 Stack Overflow developer survey that site reliability engineers and DevOps specialists make anywhere from twelve dollars to $30,000 more a year than their peers. There's a reason that AWS is the fifth most loved and second most wanted technology. There's a reason why that last year over 80% of enterprises were running apps or experimenting with AWS. 80%. And it's simple. The cloud and AWS gives you and your organization access to powers and opportunities that were unimaginable decades ago. And guess what? The knowledge you'll gain from this series is the first step towards making that power your own.